So in this section, we're going to talk about nonlinear systems. Uh, but before we get to nonlinear systems, uh, let's review linear uh, systems and, and how to solve them uh, from previous courses. So um, what I have on the, on the screen is a linear system. And, and I know that it's linear because uh, all of the variables have exponents of 1. Um, a, B, C, D, E, F are, of course, constants. Um, so we've got a, a linear system. And there are three ways uh, that you learn to solve these linear systems in earlier courses. Um, the two most common uh, would be substitution and elimination. Those are the ones that you used primarily, um, but they're not the only me methods. Um, the first one that you probably learned, actually, um, was the graphing method. And so the graphing method uh, is very important to understand and so that we can transition to nonlinear systems. Uh, if you have two lines and, and you're looking to find um, uh, the solution to the, the system, uh, then you would go ahead and graph them. And your graph could potentially look something like this. And the solution to the system uh, would be right where they cross. So the solution was always the point and that's important to remember, the point of intersection. So wherever they intersected, that's the solution. Now, what I have is, is just one potential option. Um, if you have a linear system, you could also have parallel lines, in which case there would be no point of interse intersection, therefore no solution. Uh, and the other option that you had was if the first line was the same as the second line. Um, if that was the case, uh, you had infinitely many solutions because, of course, you have infinitely many shared points between the two lines. Now, for linear systems, these were your only three options. Um, but we're going to start talking now about nonlinear systems. And as you can imagine, the graphs would, would be very different, potentially, uh, and could also give you many, many other options for types and numbers of solutions. Uh, for example, um, if we had maybe an ellipse, which is nonlinear, and we had a polynomial that was doing something like this, we could see now you would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 solutions because there would be 10 points of intersection. Um, so things really change dramatically um, in the sense of uh, possibilities for number of solutions for nonlinear systems. So the first system we're going to look at, a uh, nonlinear system, uh, is on the screen. Um, and you still have your basic substitution and elimination methods. Um, and I'll actually mention the graph of this uh, at the end of, of working through it. Um, so what I would do here in, in solving this is I would go ahead and take the y value and I would substitute it into the second equation. In doing so, we get 2 times the absolute value of x minus 1 minus x equals 1. Now, we have an absolute value equation to solve, uh, which means that we need to isolate the absolute value. Um, so to do this, uh, I'll go ahead and multiply the 2 in. Uh, I can then go ahead and add an x to both sides and add a 2 to both sides. Uh, in doing so, I'll get an x plus 3 on the right. And then finally, we have the absolute value of x equals x plus 3 over 2. So we've done the job of isolating the absolute value, which now we have to set up two different equations. Uh, x equals x plus 3 over 2 and x equals the opposite of x plus 3 over 2. <clears throat> and solving both of these separately, uh, 2x equals x plus 3. In other words, x equals 3. Um, and for the second one, I'll go ahead and I'll multiply both sides by a negative 2. So if I take this thing and I multiply it by a negative 2, I'll get a negative 2x equals x plus 3, uh, which tells us that 3x equals negative 3, or x equals a negative 1. So now we have to remember, uh, our job was to find the points of intersection where these two curves intersect. So we need to find the corresponding y-coordinates. 
Now you can go back to any equation uh, from the original uh, ones given. Um, it makes probably the most sense to go into this one since it's already solved for y. So if my x is 3, the absolute value of 3 is 3, and my y value would be 2. Uh, so the ordered pair 3, 2 would be a solution to this system. Similarly, if I take the negative 1 and go back into the original, well, the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. Whoops. 1 minus 1 is 0. Uh, so we come up with the ordered pair negative 1, 0. So those are the two solutions uh, to the, the original system. Um, and as I mentioned before, this is one where we actually can graph it pretty easily to confirm uh, that our results are in fact true. So if I take the first graph, or the first uh, equation, which is just the absolute value function shifted down one unit, and the second graph here, this would just be a line. Uh, it's, it's linear. Uh, if you solve it for y, you find out that y equals 1 half x plus 1 half, which is just a slope uh, of, of positive 1 half and a y-intercept of 1 half. So pretty shallow with a positive slope here. And now you can see the, the answers we came up with of negative 1, 0, and 3, 2 look to be uh, right on par with our, our graph. Uh, so remember, solutions to, to systems are points of intersection and should be written as points. Um, and sometimes uh, you can graph them to confirm as well, um, although the more complicated they get, you'll have to rely uh, on solving it strictly algebraically.